Since we do croissants every day, I decided to go along the road with you and share how croissants are being made from the flour bag to the freshly baked pastry. Croissant made up is always the biggest one and we barely ever do less than 40 kg flour mix batch. We do separate with up for the poolish and the dough. And outside the bag, we write down how much water we need to add for poolish and how much milk we need to add for the dough. This is a crucial component of the croissant dough. We mix the poolish a day before by adding some water, yeast and flour. Mix for a few minutes and arranging into containers, leaving enough space to ferment. If you don't leave enough of space, it may happen this. Poor William had to sort out my mistake. But hey, after that, I have never made the same mistake again. We leave it to proof on slow mode. Next day we take it out and it should look like this. Bubbly and a bit sour. Since we have all ingredients ready from yesterday, on a mixing day we will dip only milk. Then we head to the bread section as we need a massive mixer for the amount we normally do. Just to give you a clear idea, one dough is 6.8 kilograms of croissant dough. Today I'm doing a small batch, only 15 doughs. If we translate that to numbers, it is 102 kilograms of dough. Once all ingredients are in the bowl, we mix the dough for a couple of minutes. Scrape down the sides, as we don't want any wastage or loss in weight. Giving a few extra minutes of mixing and leaving to rest with plastic dough bags on top. That will take around 20 minutes. We remove the plastic dough bags as the dough rested enough and here is the part where you need to use your muscles and physical strength. As now, we are taking the whole dough out. We slice the dough in smaller pieces in order to transfer to our trolley and then we go back to the pastry side where we will portion this huge mountain of dough in a smaller pieces. We're weighting up each piece precisely and folding into oblong shape. leaving to rest on the workbench and then placing trays with some lined paper, pressing a bit and putting into a plastic dough bag. All this trolley with the dough goes into the walk-in fridge for now. After the dough has rested and proofed enough, we're placing them in the so freezer. we're preparing the dough to put in the freezer. So basically it comes in stages. We need it to prove a bit and now we need to cool it down. First we are pressing down the dough, then putting into a freezer and finally putting these blue ice blocks on top. We will leave them to rest till the night baker comes and takes the dough out for the morning shift. The morning shift starts at 6 am and the croissant dough is already defrosted. We start lamination straight away in the morning as it takes a couple of hours. The first step is to flatten the butter. Each dough requires two plugs of butter. We roll the dough to the required length and thickness. We put flattened butter between the layers of the dough. Rolling again. Then trim the edges where you cannot even see the layers of butter and dough. We close the dough as nicely as possible, folding the trim ends inside. The ideal size of laminated dough should be as big as the metal trays we use here. Then we do the second fold, which is much faster. We still trim the ends of the laminated dough and close nicely this way. placing the dough in a plastic bag. Then we leave the dough to rest into the freezer. After it has rested, we're taking it out and start rolling. While the dough is still cold, we roll it till we reach the exact width and then turn it and continue rolling. Then 
we lay the dough on the clean workbench, folding it in half horizontally and trim the ends. Then we cut the dough along the opposite side and after that simply cut in triangles for the croissants. We keep the consistency by checking weight of every single piece. I leave you to watch how the croissants are being shaped. Let's say on a normal day we do around 500 croissants, but once we bake them, we leave a good portion of them for almond croissants, which are later being filled with almond paste and topped with flaked almonds. After we have finished with shaping, we lay 12 croissants per tray and leave them in a prover which is set to prove a certain time. For some unexplainable reason, we love making baby croissants. Look how cute they are! Which size do you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. Here croissants are perfectly ready to go to the oven, giving them a final touch of egg wash and filling the oven with pastries. Right proofing time is essential part, as overproof pastry won't expand much during baking and it will be flat or underproofed will be small and dense. In the blink of the eye, they are done. Look at this golden beauty. I hope you got a flavor what it takes to make a croissant and hopefully next time you eat a croissant, you will remember how many loving hands contributed to its creation. Thank you for watching and see you next week.